Hey guys, Frank Cox here, the Barbecue Pit Engineer, and this is the Smoker Builder Channel. Welcome to today's video. On today's video, Aaron and I are gonna cut doors in this tank. We're gonna show you how to mark them out and everything, so stay tuned. All right guys, so welcome back to the video here. Uh, what we're gonna do, we've got this thousand gallon turned around just because we could see better here. Um, but uh, I wanted to show you, <clears throat> we're gonna do this one firebox right. That's what Ken asked for whenever he asked us to build this pit. What that basically means is looking at the cook chamber doors, the firebox is on the right side. Uh, anyway, we're doing firebox right on this one here. And uh, We've got this thing up off the ground because our pallet jack fits underneath it here real nice. Yeah, so now everything's up off the ground a little bit, but we don't really, I mean, we already know where our bottom door cut's gonna be. It's gonna be at 36 inches and that's how we built our sled. Yeah. So we know all of that's fixed. All we had to do now is get this thing level lengthwise and level side to side. And once again, thanks to the concrete guy, he did a good job. Yeah, we checked it out and everything's back to where it should be. So. Yeah. No so, stress. So, uh, anyway, you want to go over the tools we're going to use today on this? Yeah, well, we kind of have a mix of stuff from our toolbox. Uh, some are conventional tools and some are not. So, uh, the first one, I when I saw this initially, I was kind of like, oh, of course, that's an excellent tool to have for this purpose. And that is this customized curved <laughs> aluminum, you know, yardstick. Or what? Yeah. yeah, it's a forty. It's a four. Actually, it was a T square that I cut off because I had one laying around. Yeah, I think it became out of square, and then all of a sudden it became a candidate for this. So you know, this is just an undersized sprung piece of aluminum, and this will fit around the radius of most pipes that we get into or or tanks. So this is great. This is a great thing to just put on here. Uh, we can put a strap around this and it'll push us tight against our tank and we'll be able to square this up and measure and get this parallel to where it needs to be. And at that point, it allows you to just generate a line on here, or if you're really brave, it'll allow you to generate an edge to use on your plasma cutter and just guide that all the way down. And yeah. we'll show you that here in a couple steps. And, and aluminum is the, is the ruler of choice, not a piece of steel strap, because as your cutter is cutting, the spatter that comes off the top of this tank, especially because there's paint here, and we don't want to remove this paint because that's part of our feel and look on this cooker. But aluminum, that spatter won't stick to that aluminum ruler. You see this side silver and kind of untouched, and then this side has some smoke char on here a little bit from uh, past cuts. Now, it's aluminum, it's soft, and the plasma cutter will easily just slam right through this. So this would be a consumable, and you will yeah. have to replace this over time, but very easy and a uh, great functioning tool. Yeah. We'll, we'll show you here in a minute how to put that on. What else we got here that's important to well, what we're doing Regressing today? back, we just squared up our uh, tank with our digital level. This one's from Empire. It's just a small handheld unit just under 200 bucks, sometimes it's on sale. Uh, but man, I just lean on this so much, I can't express how much. This is one of my favorite tools in the shop. Anyway, so we're gonna go ahead and get started uh, marking these doors out. Um, I'm gonna go mobile with one of these cameras a little bit and kind of watch you do it, huh? Let's okay. just wanna do that. Sure. You wanna do the camera? I'll go mobile. Okay, we're gonna let Aaron run the camera and I'll do yeah. it. There we go. There it is. Frank can see that line. Okay. So now what we got to do is we got to bring it down. We're going to come down from the top dead center, down eight inches. What that's going to do, if we bring that eight inches down from top dead center, what will happen is it's going, to it's going to change the fulcrum point of where we're lifting the door from. And that dramatically reduces the amount of weight that we're lifting. Uh, just some, what is that guy? That Greek guy, I never can remember his name. Aristotle? Yeah, I think so. Aristotle, I think, is the guy that can move the world. Anyway, that's kind of what we're talking about here, is if, you're, if your weight is already hung by the hinge and you start to swing, it's going to be a lot easier on that initial lift. And mechanically, what we're trying to do is we want that to be able to, like a barbell, when the guy starts to lift, pull back, like right here's where it loads up and his wrists are already rolling. So you can take that with one hand and once you get your wrist rolled, then you can just push. 
and it's a lot easier to push than it is to pull up, at least it is for me anyway. So, um, and really what it amounts to is, I just don't like the looks of a counterweight myself. I, I hate messing around with counterweights. I just try to avoid them at all costs. And if I can make that door easy for the pit master to lift, then I don't have to deal with a counterweight. On the other hand, I don't have to rely on that counterweight. I've got a podcast on the channel here. If you go back far enough, it talks about how a door fell on my head. And uh, that was a counterweighted door. So Is that what happened to you? That's what happened to me. It freaking hurt. Uh, it, fortunately, it was a really short drop. It wasn't a full drop on me. So um, counterweights just don't hold stuff open. So we have a part called a door safety catch that we make. We're going to put those on this pit so that whenever somebody lifts this door up, it has a positive stop that keeps it open. And then the second thing is, is that it's not going to require the pit master to lift it more than they can reach for that counterweight to hit and hold the door open yeah. on the back of the tank. It launch a smaller uh, statured person. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. So if they got to get on a stool to grab the door, you know. Yeah. So in this case, uh, somebody that's a shorter pit master, especially on a thousand gallon when your door cuts at 36 inches, they can just reach up because we usually make the door clear our head so that we don't lid skid on the way in, right? Yeah. And if we don't lid skid on the way in, it's unlikely that, it's, that the normal person will lid skid on the way in. So then they can just reach up with their hand comfortably, lift a little bit, flip the flipper, and let it down. Very controlled effort. Yeah, yeah and, and along with that uh, height is going to be your handle. And when we showcase our door handle brackets, we'll show you how they're designed and why. And uh, mm -hmm. It's real time stuff because otherwise you can run into injury. <laughs> yeah, you just want to make it, make sure that whoever's running the pit doesn't get hurt because we did something that looked better instead of like something that was functional and worked. You yeah, know, absolutely. And safe. So, right. ready to roll? Help. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I use our ruler. I'm yeah. Find totally. the top. All right, so I'm gonna run the top. Maybe you can get the bottom mark. Yeah. All right, so we got our eight inches. Now it's time to get out the six, the long straight uh, ruler. And make some marks. Where'd that thing go? I got it here. So we're actually going to snap a line on this, uh, mostly because I can see blue, but also in between our doors, we don't want to have like uh, we don't want to have that black mark left on the tank. It's yeah. hard to get off of this paint. We're just trying to keep it untouched as possible. Alrighty, let me chalk it again. I think you just like using the chalk. I like to get it all over his hands. That's what it is. If you're not snapping the line, don't move. Let the other guy move <laughs> first. <laughs> then you got two lines and you got to race them. We're good. I see it all the way across. Okay. If a colorblind guy can see it, then you're good. All right. Sometimes colorblind guys can see what uh, normal people can't. That's right. <laughs> like new colors. <laughs> yeah. All right, so now we've got the bottom door cut marked and the top door cut marked. Now we've got to decide where's the sides of our doors going to be. Um, we, because we need to know that before we start cutting this. You know, that's, that's yeah. important. All right, so we're at a, uh, see, I'm already off. What do you say, two inches? Yeah, two inches from the seam. Okay, so one, two, that's us. Yep. And then we're going to come over here. And we, we said we're going to do three inches on both, so I'll just put the 12 on center. And I'm going to come off three inches here. And again here, if I can see my tape. There it is. Yep. Six inches there. Double check, six. Yep. All right. And then we're going to come in two again. Sometimes we'll just cheat the tape a little burn, bit. Burn a couple inches? Yeah, just to make sure. All right, so now we got our line on the end and in the middle, and we still have to deal with the center here. So we're going to take this measurement, divide it by two, make a hash mark, and then we're going to come out three inches on both sides of that mark for a six inch span here. Does that sound right? Yep. yep. Okay. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. And by the way, you know, if you're wanting to build some custom smokers of your own, we have a wide selection of DIY plans available at smokerplans.net. Now you can shop several smokers from gravity fees to traditional Texas offsets. 
Uh, if you're just starting out, we also have an online course with Smoker Builder U. Uh, you get on there, you can gain access to all of our online courses to help with your build process. Uh, we'll show you how to do that, Smoker Builder U. Until uh, next time, this is Mr. Void, and uh, we'll see you later.